Welcome to the Industrial Networking Overview module of the Control Systems Fundamentals for Industrial Networking course. The goal of this course is to enable learners to assimilate the information presented in future training courses, such as managing industrial networks with Cisco networking technologies. As IT personnel, you may be asking the question, what is an industrial network? This module presents a high-level overview of common industrial verticals, as well as providing an introduction to industrial networking. After completing this module, you will be able to identify common industrial verticals, describe the evolution of the internet as it pertains to industrial automation, and compare enterprise and industrial networks. In this lesson, you will learn the major sectors of the economy that exist within industrial networking, Major economic areas such as manufacturing, production, energy, mining and transportation are undergoing a transformation as robots, vehicles and industrial control systems connect to the Internet. New demands on industrial networks require a greater need for improved interconnectivity across industrial equipment and enterprise networks. We will discuss verticals in which automation and industrial networking played critical roles in corporate infrastructure, manufacturing, mining, energy, oil and gas, and transportation. Throughout the 20th and 21st centuries, the manufacturing industry has increasingly played a significant role in world trade and the global economy. Since the Industrial Revolution, innovations in manufacturing have driven discoveries in automation, computing, and networking in order to speed the production of goods, improve manufacturing quality, and promote improved safety and security standards industry-wide. Today, industrial manufacturing companies employ a multitude of networked computer elements, some from traditional IT or enterprise networking, and some from the proprietary world of industrial networking. Gradually, these two networking traditions have started to converge, with manufacturing moving towards standardized communication and interaction between devices, such as the use of standard protocols, devices communicating outside the internal network for updates and data relay. Significant differences between industrial enterprise networking remain, However, they mandate industrial engineers have the knowledge of both IT and automation to successfully navigate the manufacturing field. Discrete manufacturing is the production of things, which are individual objects that exist as separate entities from each other. Examples include simple items such as plastic cups or clothing to complex items such as mobile phones, computers and automobiles. In discrete manufacturing, the result of the manufacturing process is a standalone entity even if it is a complex object. This can then be broken down into several parts and each of those parts becomes its own entity. The process flow of discrete manufacturing is dependent upon the goods or raw materials needed to create the final product. For example, in discrete manufacturing, if standardized protocols are used in the industrial network, it may be possible for automobile components such as steel, plastic and glass to be automatically reordered as needed for car production by an inventory control system that can communicate outside of the industrial network. This ensures that even though raw material has its own processing time, materials are always on hand to complete production. This industry trend towards converging IT and industrial network technology has helped streamline work processes in this manner. This ensures builds of materials can be automatically acted upon, while other equipment needs such as safety requirements, servicing needs, and other relevant messages can be automatically relayed as appropriate. Process manufacturing is about making something based on a recipe or formula rather than component lists or bills of material. When process manufacturing occurs, the finished product is the result of raw materials or components that have been irrevocably altered and cannot be separated back out to its original inputs. For example, once flour, oil, water and salt have been combined and baked, the resulting cracker cannot be broken back down into these components. In process manufacturing, the key components are ingredients not individual parts or assemblies, such as formulas, not builds of materials, analog versus digital, and bulk, not individual units. The production of processed goods usually requires temperature or chemical conversions, which involves changes in heat and pressure. Pressure, temperature, and flow measures and monitoring are critical in process manufacturing. Chemical manufacturing, beverage manufacturing, and oil refining are examples of industries that utilize process manufacturing to produce finished products. Mining is an example of a process manufacturing industry where the goal is to separate out raw material from its environment. Mining is typically performed in remote or inaccessible locations 
and often in hospitable environments with numerous physical factors to overcome. As a result, challenges frequently focus on safety and cost considerations. Key concerns are evolving from traditional manual processes for monitoring and production control and improving asset tracking, response times and forecasting. Obstacles that mining operations face include large-scale and ever-changing physical locations, inability to respond quickly and accurately to market conditions, equipment and personnel tracking, regulatory compliance and accurate results analysis. Tracking and reporting are critical to the mining industry to maintain and evaluate safety systems, heavy equipment and the operational environment. Monitoring and integrating equipment can help ensure personnel and assets are well managed, escalate the status of any potential equipment damages or failures in a timely manner, and ensure that forecasts utilize current, reliable information. The oil and gas industry presents many of the same challenges as the mining industry, including large remote locations, unforgiving environments, massive operational scaling, stringent safety regulations, and managing personnel and tangible assets. Economic realities demand closely tailored reporting and planning capabilities and the integration of critical elements throughout a company in order to respond to real-time situations and make quick decisions is essential. Similar to the mining industry, the need to explore and test for rich deposits of oil and gas must be balanced against the rising costs of such testing. Both industries benefit from improved communication capacity and speed, more accurate and timely analysis, and improved safety oversight. Improvements in manufacturing and processing can help lower costs while simultaneously contributing to safer work environment, better resource management, and minimizing the industry's environmental impact. Transportation is one of the industries that is undergoing rapid transformation today. The transportation industry includes such diverse ecosystems such as automotive vehicles, railways, air transportation and shipping. Traffic congestion and accidents account for countless numbers of lost shipments, hours and days of lost time, and rising repair costs that drive up expenses to companies and individuals. Better signaling and improving accident avoidance technology can be addressed by adding automated elements to roadways, automobiles, and other manned road vehicles. Rail and connected vehicle traffic are vital for mass transit as well as land-based cargo transport. Complex signaling and railway management demands, coupled with stringent safety requirements, can often be addressed by adding elements of automation throughout systems. Airlines and airports face similar management challenges and safety concerns, in addition to rising customer expectations and demands. Automated air traffic controls, aircraft autopilot capabilities, and safety reporting and alarm systems can help mitigate rising costs while delivering the levels of service and security needed in the air transportation industry. The shipping industry enables the transport of most of the world's goods, and like other transportation industry segments, security, safety, and profitability are paramount. Introducing automation elements for navigation, cargo handling and processing, and resource management can help improve logistics and management tasks to help streamline operations and reduce costs. In this second lesson, you will learn what the terms Internet of Everything and Internet of Things both mean to industrial networking. You will also learn what enterprise and industrial networks are, as well as the major differences and their components. More and more in today's world, people expect to use technology and devices in an interconnected way. For example, it is now commonplace to use a smartphone to control the lighting in a residence or to open and close the garage door. The internet forms the backbone of such powerful networking capabilities. Due to all of the varied devices that can and do receive part or all of their instruction set from the internet, this new evolution horizon is known as the Internet of Everything, or IOE. The major components of IOE include people, data, things and process. People and data are natural matches for IOE. People connect to each other and to data sources using devices including smartphones, laptops and tablets to interact via social networks such as Twitter, Foursquare, Facebook and others. Data analysis provides evidence for how people organize and use information, how data is manipulated and combined to gain new insights and even to reflect information about people themselves and what their preferences and experiences might be. Things are physical objects with the ability to connect to the internet and often to each other. This rapidly growing group includes items like monitors, sensors and other informatic devices that can feed data back to a central database or to each other and can automatically download upgrades and updates to their internal programming. When things work together and combine data, better and more comprehensive decision making is possible. 
Building on improved decision-making abilities processes a large piece of the inherent value of IOE. People, data and things working together can help tailor an environment, meaning that processes can be automated and simplified, saving time and money. For example, on a factory floor, sensors and line devices like robotic arms can feed data to an environmental control system that can automatically adjust the air temperature so that the equipment does not overheat and so that the workers in the factory are comfortable. The Internet of Things, or IoT, is a subset of IOE in that it deals specifically with how things are networked and connected in the real world. Using data provided by such a wide range of objects can provide significant improvements in operational efficiency and management in industrial manufacturing settings. The Internet of Things is a subset of the IOE where everyday objects send data to the Internet and each other in order to provide an expanded awareness of how things interact. It also provides greater control over one's environment. Objects can provide complex data using a wide variety of monitors, sensors and input data that will enhance our understanding of how systems work and how the role of each piece of equipment plays in any given system, particularly as traditional IT and industrial networks continue to converge and blend. Metcalfe's law relates the value of a network back to the squared sum of the users who are physically connected to that system. By this estimation, the value of industries are rapidly and exponentially increasing, as we are seeing machines in a network are able to report details about their performance, their interactions with other equipment, operational or condition issues, and safety concerns. Better, faster and more automated decisions will allow trained personnel to focus on forward-thinking activities, such as forecasting and research and development, rather than monitoring operations. Improved efficiency can help drive down costs and accurate reporting can help ensure safety and security. Manufacturing industries are on the brink of huge transformations and the IoT is leading this drive forward. Industrial networks are found in many industrial domains, encompassing discrete and processing manufacturing energy, transportation, mining and so on. Some industrial networks exist in every case that require machines and systems to be controlled and monitored. Each industrial environment has its own set of slightly varied yet similar requirements that differentiate industrial networks from traditional enterprise networks. Automation networks usually have a much deeper architecture than traditional enterprise networks in order to rigidly segment different levels and zones of the network from each other. Each zone or level may be responsible for a function, group of equipment or process. For instance, in the process zone, there may be a conveyor belt delivering bottles to be packed in a shipping box. The safety zone must act to prevent bottle breakage while on the conveyor belt and by falling off the conveyor belt. The basic control zone determines the rate of speed at which the conveyor belt moves, and the area supervisory control may limit the times of day that the belt is in action. Site manufacturing operations and control determines other factors such as the necessary lighting levels in the plant. A no-go DMZ protects across the potential outside interference, such as the internet and email. This protects the integrity of the manufacturing network and all lower level zones. Despite these hierarchical variations between IT networks and industrial and manufacturing networks, a growing integration between the two has been observed as protocols and network designs continue to become much more standardized. Enterprise networks and industrial networks have different requirements as each is designed to satisfy varied needs. Enterprise networks typically exist for data processing and transfer in businesses, educational settings and homes, while industrial networks are used to control, integrate and isolate physical equipment in a manufacturing setting. Traditional networks often enjoy relatively clean environments such as offices and server farms, while industrial networking equipment is exposed to dirt, excessive temperature variations and often repetitive jarring vibration or excessive movement. The architectures of enterprise and industrial networks are designed differently to achieve specific performance goals. Enterprise networks emphasize security policies, ease of use by utilizing internet protocols such as TCP IP, and accessibility both within the network and to the ethernet. Conversely, industrial networks may use a variety of protocols such as CIP, ethernet IP, control net, and profinet in order to segment logical and functional groups of users and equipment. Security is not as critical to an industrial network since the bulk of network traffic consists of numeric or binary values, but intrusion into the network from outside access is rigorously protected to prevent the disruption of data transmission. Industrial network equipment expects prompt data transmission in order to accurately monitor equipment performance and safety thresholds. 
So any increase in network jitter could potentially threaten the integrity of a system or subsystem and ultimately the safety and productivity of the entire industrial environment. Likewise, while the failure severity of an enterprise system can be severe if data is compromised or destroyed, failure of an industrial network can be catastrophic with possible expensive damage to equipment or even potential loss of life. It is important to note that network failure should only result in financial damage, never compromising safety. The criticality of industrial networking equipment affects everything from performance goals and network and environment safety to the type of data transmitted over the system. Traffic on an enterprise network typically consists of complex data such as voice over IP, graphic images or large and varied file types. Most often this data does not need to be transmitted sequentially or in real time since internet protocols convey instructions of how to rebuild the transmitted content. In comparison, industrial networks may only send very small bit or byte size values that must be sent and received in real time and sequentially. The ability of equipment to perform under harsh conditions is also a common standard of an industrial network, whereas enterprise networks typically operate in sheltered, climate-controlled buildings with relatively little equipment movement required. Another striking difference between IT and industrial networks is that in an enterprise network, updates and upgrades can be performed as needed or desired, and equipment can typically be added or removed from the network with little to no ill effect. In an industrial system, however, updates, upgrades and the addition of equipment must be meticulously planned and only implemented when all work on the network or zone has come to a complete stop. Otherwise, production may be negatively affected, safety and security risks may inadvertently rise, and the cost from lost revenue may be staggering. Enterprise networks are familiar in that they employ traditional connectivity topologies and organizations. At the heart of an enterprise network are the servers and storage repositories responsible for hosting distributed programs, maintaining access control and security policies, user information, system configuration data, and so on. The system is made inaccessible through various switches, routers, and access points, and may consist of WANs, LANs, or both. While the structure can get complex within any given enterprise topology, at the core of it is a fairly shallow architectural hierarchy, rarely running more than two or three levels deep. On the other hand, industrial networks employ multiple layers of segmentation to isolate equipment and functional activity. At the top layer, the data center may resemble an IT network. However, as the hierarchy descends deeper and deeper, and the DMZ is passed, it becomes more evident to see that manufacturing resides in a segmented zone, controllers are held apart in a separate zone or level, and LAN communications operate within their own zone. This is merely an overview of industrial network architecture. Greater detail will be provided about each zone and level, and the operations contained therein as learning progresses. Congratulations! You've completed Module 1, Industrial Networking Overview for the Control System's Fundamentals for Industrial Networking Courseware. In this module you learned, common industrial verticals include manufacturing, mining, utilities, smart grid and energy, oil and gas, as well as transportation. IoT is a networking architecture which allows tangible things to be connected to support faster and more accurate data transmission and more complex data reporting. IoT is a major subset component of IOE, which is rapidly transforming both the manufacturing industry and the global economy and that enterprise and industrial networks are similar and that they each most likely have a corporate or outward facing level, but they differ in terms of networking architecture, purpose and requirements, characteristics and topology. Thank you for your interest and attention.